Coney 2012 is the story of a man, Jason Russell, and his relentless quest to stop Ugandan warlord, Joseph Coney. Let's begin with the action start. On March 5th, 2012, a charity called Invisible Children published a high production video called Coney 2012. It was an awareness campaign seeking to mobilize action to capture or kill Ugandan warlord, Joseph Coney. And the goal of the story was to make Coney famous. 30 minutes long, it really tried to pull at your heartstrings. At the end of my life, I want to say that the world we've left behind is one that Gavin can be proud of. A place that doesn't allow Joseph Coney's and child soldiers. And little Gavin would have been proud because it took off like no video on YouTube ever had. We wanted 500,000 views in the whole year of 2012. We got 500,000 views in the first three hours. It received 100 million views in the first six days. 1.4 million likes. Click that link in the Let's description down below. Down. They clicked it so hard the website went down, and their email was so inundated that the service provider assumed it was an attack and temporarily pulled the plug. The Times named it the most viral video ever. It raised the charity over $20 million. People really went fucking bananas for this video and those Ugandan kids. Four million hashtags. People changed their Facebook profiles, so you knew it was a big deal. A fan-made mobile game. Are you woke about Joseph Coney? Yeah, but are you woke enough to get a tattoo? People were up for pretty much anything to stop Coney, as long as it didn't involve any practical action. One like equals one saved child. But who is Joseph Coney and what's all the fuss? Well, he's the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA. My God, you're greasy. And he really is one of the most evil people living today. Imagine the worst crime you can think of committing, and he'll have done it thousands of times over. Takes children, makes them kill their parents, and eat their parents. The surviving girls will be kept as sex slaves, and the boys conscripted into the LRA as child soldiers. I know, it's kind of a bummer. It's all part of a civil conflict that's been going on for 30 years. We'll get into the details later, but for now, consider this our one-dimensional bad guy. And here's our protagonist, Jason Russell, the figurehead of Coney 2012 and Invisible Children. He's a devout Christian, stereotypically Californian. And I do consider myself a refined valley dude. But he has a bad boy side too. So it all starts in 2003, when, as a naive and aspiring filmmaker, he goes to Uganda with two friends in search of a story. While driving through a rural village, a car was shot in front of us by a rebel army who was led by a guy named Joseph Kony. They drive to a city for safety and find this. Turns out it's part of a nightly routine. Kids live in the villages, but commute to the city to sleep there to avoid being kidnapped in midnight raids by the LRA. Thousands and thousands of kids without an adult in sight. Jason had found his story. And a cause. It must have made a real impression on him, because for the next 10 years he dedicated himself, almost exclusively, to trying to improve things in Uganda and stop Kony. Kony 2012 was the culmination, but in the preceding years he tried a bunch of other schemes. This. The bracelet campaign. This. Twice daily broadcast about where the LRA is and where they're active. Uh, and this. Do what we always do. Dance. This is all real. We're on a mission, put you gotta deep inside your mind. It needs attention and a dance to make it sparkle and shine. Naturally, questions have been raised about his sexual orientation. All these other rumors, too, that you were gay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've heard those rumors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My parents started a large children's theater organization, so I am... Theatrical. Theatrical. <clears throat> yeah, okay, that makes sense. 
Straight men are allowed to enjoy musicals. It's current year. Back to Coney 2012. So the video lays out a plan called Cover the Night. Here's what you do. Pay $30 for your super special Coney action kit. Whoa, that's nice. In the kit you'll find five items. Button, bracelet, stickers, shirt, and these posters. Then, on April 20th, in the dead of night, go out and vandalize your town with awareness. And wake up to hundreds of thousands of posters demanding justice on every corner. It was going to be amazing. Everyone was on board. The countdown to April 20th had begun. And all Jason and co had to do was keep the momentum going and not fuck it up. This is the new way to move the world to action. But this movie is not without critics. Critics say the film manipulates the facts. Simplifying the story. We're simplifying a wildly complex that the issue. message is too late. Joseph Coney and his forces have been significantly reduced. Pro-war activism. Utterly naive to By next that. week, this will be a passing fact. These white westerners sort of getting on a bandwagon and actually they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. A day or two later, the heady excitement gave way to more down-to-earth analysis. Media commentators started making scathing critiques of the video, and testimony from Uganda wasn't entirely positive either. It's unfortunate that we can have people who are merchandising, but using people's problems. Then it got really serious. Teenage girls started weighing in. Tony, so I asked my mom, and my mom laughs and goes, he died like five years ago. This is wrong, by the way, but it was seen by four million people. From a source of, my mum said it, so it must be true. The term slacktivism started cropping up more and more. Legitimate questions were asked, how will the money donated be spent? That invisible children would send would have to go to the Ugandan military. Why did you put your son in the film? You know, why would you put your son in the film? You know, why did you put yourself in the film? It was questions about our sincerity. Why are they saying Kony is in Uganda? when he's actually in the Central African Republic. Invisible Children wasn't popular among other charities either. They were hogging the limelight. And they released Coney 2012 just two days before International Women's Day, a critical fundraising time for some. Even the Ugandan Prime Minister took a few jabs. We do not need a sleek video on YouTube for us to take notice. Once people started feeling misled, they turned against the organization and squared the blame on one person. The pressure was building. Online backlash and a hectic schedule was starting to take a toll. My phone was getting 10 text messages every second. It was just... Millions of supporters on one side, millions of critics on the other. On and on and on. Make Coney famous? Well, it made Jason famous too. And the pressure kept increasing. He was flying all over the country to spread his message. He took the red eye to New York, landed at five in the morning. Working around the clock. On the Today Show, People Magazine, Reuters. By day three, I was in LA doing interview after interview after interview. 17 interviews in 48 hours. Wow. So he was sleeping less and becoming more erratic. Not being able to sleep, not being able to stop my racing mind. Criticism from every direction. Then it was like, you're the worst. You're terrible, and Coney's dead. They started saying the whole project was for his ego, or based on greed, and not just criticism, responsibility. How are you going to stop children from being murdered, Jason? You promised a solution, Jason. When are you gonna deliver Coney? At the end of that day, my mind was exhausted. To release the pressure, he and his family tried to take a couple of days off by going to Palm Springs. But people recognized him there too, so they hid away in their hotel room with the curtains closed. Jason was starting to crack. Paranoia. Delusions of grandeur. He went with his family to see the Lorax, and he thought the film was speaking to him directly. Voices in Jason's head told him that he needed to get to New York in the next 12 hours, or Coney would win. Whatever that meant. Then. He stripped off all of his clothes and ran out into the street. I was on a street in San Diego, totally naked and crazy out of my mind. Someone driving by in a car took a film, a video on their phone, and they sold it to TMZ for $30,000. And then my naked and crazy mess went viral as well. Some have said that he was jacking it 
and that he was on drugs. Neither is true. It's just a very distressed man having a mental episode. Were you also masturbating? Did I hear that too? No one who was there ever said that that was happening. Yeah. One of the, I mean, I'm naked, so it's not a far extension yeah. of, you know, imagination. That he was taken to the hospital, not jail. Uh, police say when they showed up, they didn't see any of that and was taken to a local medical facility that he was not arrested. Though. And there he thought the staff were trying to kill him. Just one of those things where I'm like, I don't believe what you're saying. You're trying to kill me. He ran around in his underwear, kicking in doors until eventually he was subdued and sedated. Did you come back to yourself as you know yourself? Two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks, mm -hmm. whoa. Yeah. Later on, one Sharona Reed tried to sue Mr. Russell for the trauma of having to see him do naked calisthenics. As far as I can tell though, that lawsuit went nowhere. Can you think of anything else that's worse than running around naked going like this on TMZ? Well, maybe one thing. While all of this was happening, the countdown to the day of action was still ticking. Thousands of kits had been sold. Get ready for an awareness campaign so effective you'll think you're living in Uganda. The kids rolled out into the street. Selfie sticks and posters ready. Let's do it. Let's save those kids. We're changing the world. Oh, God, yes. But it wasn't all well intended. Some took it as a chance to vandalize their neighborhood with impunity. The adults were left to clean up the mess. And despite the impression you might get from this fancy montage, the turnout was abysmal. Here are some figures. Toronto, 50,000 people registered. Real attendance, 50. Sydney, 18,000 people registered. Real attendance, 12. Montreal, 4,800 registered. Real attendance, zero. Instead, they canceled their event and put up a post calling Invisible Children a fraud organization. This is what four million Coney hashtags gets you. Now, I bet you want to know where Invisible Children, Jason Russell, and Coney are now. But before I tell you that, I want to go on two quick tangents of things I found while researching. In the Coney 2012 video, you'll see this guy, Louis Marino Ocampo, Chief Prosecutor for the International Criminal Court. This would be the organization that charges Coney if he was ever caught. Well, in 2017, a bunch of Louis's emails were leaked, and they detailed one hell of a caper to catch Coney and bring him to justice. I'm not making any of the following up, right? Here's the plan. Lure Coney out of the jungle with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie as bait. Straight from a Hollywood movie, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt attempting to arrest an African warlord. So it would go, the A-list couple would fly to the edge of the jungle where Coney is hiding and call him up with an invitation to dinner. Coney, starstruck, would of course say yes. He'd show up, presumably bottle of wine in hand and ready to mingle. Then, imagine his shock. It was a trap all along. Special forces would pop out from behind the salad bar and get their guy. One idea appears to have been for Angelina Jolie to lure him to a private dinner where he would be arrested. It was a foolproof plan, but unfortunately, it was never realized. Once Miss Jolie stopped responding to Louis's weird emails, Ocampo approached George Clooney for use of his spy satellite. The chief prosecutor had also attempted to recruit George Clooney in a plot to fly spy satellites over Libya. Uh, yes, that's correct. George Clooney partnered with a satellite company to spy on El Bashar of Sudan. Okie doke. Anyway, he responded that the satellite wasn't powerful enough. So then Ocampo moved on to his backup date, Sean Penn, whom he invited to the UN security meeting in South Sudan. What? And there were some people having fun with Coney 2012 as well. Turns out Coney looks a lot like Carl Weathers in the movie Predator. So an idea was formed. Take this screenshot from Predator, post it on Facebook and say how great he is without mentioning the name. Then wait for some slacktivists to immediately assume it's Joseph Coney. Then you call them racist. It was good for a few minutes of fun. 
Then they tried it on the official meetup pages. Promptly deleted. And we're back. So get a load of this total car crash, dumpster fire, shitstorm, diaper hurricane, am I right guys? Well no. Despite all the mishaps and poor turnout, Kony 2012 was a massive success. The goal was to make an obscure warlord in rural Uganda a household name. And they succeeded. A reach in the hundreds of millions on a budget of about $1.5 million. Any marketing agency would kill for that. In fact, seven years later, you probably clicked on this video because you have some vague notion of Kony and that video already. Now, let me give you a very brief rundown on where everyone is, then let's get out of here. Invisible children, outside of long-term and small-scale projects, they've largely ceased operations. Joseph Kony, he's still out there, but his army is shrinking and splintering. He is effectively in hibernation. And Jason Russell, he's no longer with Invisible Children. He's also been breakdown free since 2012, but he's still doing the activism thing. Look. I've had to gloss over so many details in this video, and there are so many more questions to be answered, but I don't want this video to be an hour long or to take two months more to make, so I'm going to round this one off with a Q&A on the second channel. What about that $20 million they raised? Why didn't the US military or the Ugandan military ever just bomb the shit out of Kony? What did Kony have to say about the video? All of these questions, and a ton more, plus any questions you may have of your own. Uganda want to see it. Remember Uganda Knuckles?